vegetable farmers and their weed control machines. In this video, we visit nine vegetable farms in three New England states to talk with growers about their weed control equipment and how it's used. They will describe a variety of cultivation tools and approaches to weed control. Hopefully, their knowledge and experience will help you get a better understanding of cultivation equipment and techniques. Matching cultivation tools to the soils, crops, weeds, and other particulars of a farm can be a complex task. Growers that are trying to reduce or eliminate their reliance on herbicides need information that will help them make good decisions about cultivation and weed control. Extension, research, and the private sector working together can generate that kind of information. Funded in part by the USDA Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Program, promoting environmentally sound and economically viable agriculture. This video was produced by Vern Grubinger, University of Vermont Extension System, and Mary Jane Else, University of Massachusetts Agroecology Program. Well, my name is Bob Gray, and my wife Kim and I farm here in South Newbury, Vermont. Uh, we run a roadside sales operation. We have uh, approximately 30 acres under cultivation. Um, try to grow a wide variety of uh, vegetables, and we have a pick-your-own strawberry operation and a wholesale strawberry operation. Uh, I would say that uh, strawberries are about a third of our, our crop, well, a third of our income, anyway. Uh, mixed vegetables sold in our retail stand are the other two-thirds. We're here today to show you some of our cultivation techniques. Uh, we feel very strongly that any weed's a bad weed. I don't like to see any weeds in the field. Uh, that doesn't always happen. We use herbicides. Um, probably our biggest crop for herbicides is corn. Uh, we think corn is a good crop to clean a field with. If we get a field that really has a lot of weed seeds in it, uh, we can put corn and go with herbicide in it. It doesn't get rid of all the weed seeds, but it certainly, you know, lowers the pressure. Uh, this machine we're using now um, is something we modified from a, well, I, we got it from Canada. It's a Canadian field cultivator, they call it. And we use it basically just for, for weed control. And we had to modify it from a larger size. Actually, these were wings that came from a 14-foot model or something, and someone had sold the, the eight-foot center portions, and this was the outside wings. He welded together and uh, made it so it fit between the rolls of plastic. We, when we lay down our plastic, we always try to put the plastic just a, a track the width or a little more apart. Um, and we use a lot of space between our plastic, but that's mainly just for weed control, because we found that when you had to do it by hand uh, with a hoe or hand push cultivator, it just never got done. If we can jump on the track, then we can easily do, you know, three or four or five acres in an afternoon or do, you know, ten lengths of plastic in a half an hour. And the advantage of this field cultivator over a tiller, we used to take the tiller and crank it up so it was really shallow and just cuff the top two inches of soil. It worked very well, but it was slow. The beauty of this piece of equipment here is that you can adjust the depth. And so we can use it as a primary tillage tool to loosen the soil and go six to eight inches deep. That's what we want to do, but when you're controlling weeds, we just want to skim the surface of the soil, top two inches. And so with this adjusting wheel here, we can raise these tines up or down so they just barely skim, because we don't want to bring up more soil. We want to just sterilize the soil, the top two inches of soil, and kill those weeds that are in that zone. Uh, so this is just simply a spring-loaded, I mean, a, a spring shank cultivator tooth that vibrates and creates a little more tillage action. But the, the thing I like the best is this reel in the back in that uh, once you've broken the soil up, there's some clods of dirt like this that a weed is actually growing in. And by the time it gets through this thing rolling over, it breaks it apart and exposes the root, and it literally hangs the weed up to dry, as you can see some of them hanging on the basket there. And that's the important thing. You get the soil off the bare, the bare root of the small weed, flip it over, and it lay it on top of the ground where the sun can bake it and uh, kill it. Uh, we've been trying to figure out a, a system for the edges of plastic for as many years we use plastic. And this is coming closer to what we want all the time. We used to use shovels, uh, sweeps they call them, off a cultivator. But that would either go above the plastic and 
just skim along and not kill the weeds or go below the plastic and loosen it up and not kill the weeds either. Uh, we find this, we can run right over the top of the plastic and in fact sometimes I think it even stretches the plastic tighter uh, and makes it, the plastic better because it'll roll over the top and push little holes in and punch it down further in the soil. So this, this is zone if you understand on the edge of the plastic where the plastic curls down under where you secure it to the soil that there's always a weed problem. If you can't take a hole, even with a hole, you end up tearing the plastic. Whereas this thing seems to go over and uh, flick the weeds off, if they're small. As I said, again, these weeds are too big. We had a problem here, we, we missed them the first time through. But under ideal conditions, it, uh, if you time it right, it works quite well. This piece of equipment here actually came off a Lilliston cultivator. It's uh, some of your larger Lilliston setups have what they call an inner wheel. It's a smaller spider wheel. that. Uh, runs very close to the plant and we just took it and modified it with the same hookup to this cultivator set up here. We got an adjustment here so we can swivel it to get an angle. The more angle you get, the more action you get. And uh, we think it works pretty well. I got some weeds here in front of me and the time to get weeds is actually before you see them or just when they're an inch or less tall because the root system isn't very strong and by just flicking the dirt you can roll the soil over and, and get the weed exposed to the surface where it'll die in a half an hour or less in the sun. You take a larger weed here, which is one we missed from the last cultivation. This weed has so much reserve, moisture and nutrients in the stalk itself that it'll sacrifice that. And that, that weed there will not die in an hour in the sun. It may not die all day in the sun. So this, you've missed it. Once they get this, this big, you're in real trouble. It means handwork. So timing is everything. Uh, and we always have problems. If it rains four days in a row and it's warm and you can't cultivate anyway, then the weeds get away from you. And I guess that leads me to another point, is that we have lots of cultivators and lots of tractors, and I think you almost never have too many, <laughs> because I like to have each cultivation piece of equipment on each tractor so I don't have to stop and adjust and mount up, because sometimes you don't have the time to do that. It would be nice just to be able to jump from one tractor onto another one. And it's kind of extravagant, but you can usually find a used tractor that, uh, if you don't use it too heavily, will last for years, and just mount a certain piece of equipment on that tractor, get it set up perfectly, and leave it. This piece of equipment here is a Lilliston rolling tine cultivator, and uh, it's a very versatile tillage tool because it adjusts so many ways and will do so many things. Uh, you can adjust it this way, like if you want to hill potatoes, you can crank it up pretty steep and it'll th throw dirt up. Uh, you can adjust it back and forth, like if you see it this way for more action, if you want it to dig more and move more dirt, then you s turn this backwards. You can slide it this way to get closer to the plant or further away from the plant. Uh, we like it a lot, we use it on many, many crops. Right here on broccoli, uh, we use it to actually throw dirt underneath the plant to bury weeds. We have the front sweeps on, and then we come along, which will move the dirt in under the plant, and this will actually throw dirt behind and throw it over the plant. And if you watch your timing, if the weeds aren't too big, you can keep this crop, uh, crop absolutely clean. I, don't, I think I can get 99% of the weeds in this crop every time, as long as I'm there when I'm supposed to be there. Uh, I want to talk about these cultivator sweeps and what they do, but when I look here, I see something that reminds me of something very important. You should never let your cultivator sh sweeps rust, and I always do because I seem too, too busy to clean them up, because, and they'll rust literally overnight because of the acidity of the soil or something. Once they rust, the dirt doesn't slide smoothly over the cultivator. It boils over. So it doesn't do nearly as nice a job of cultivating. You really want to slice just under the ground with the cultivator, an inch, half inch deep. Once you get dirt sticking to it, it begins to boil and roll. and doesn't do nearly as nice a job. And that's just because it rusted and gets sticky. And by rights, they should be cleaned off every time you get through and oiled. Uh, and if you have rust on, they should be sanded until they're really smooth. We have a problem here, we don't cultivate enough, enough acreage at one time so that they get smoothed up. If you're cultivating 10 acres, by that time they'll finally get all shiny and smooth. But here the rust lasts from one time to another. Um, we try to set these cultivator shanks, the sweeps they're called, so that they'll throw dirt underneath the plant and bury up any weeds. I mean, lots of times, I mean, my dad used to say, uh, there are two ways to kill a weed, you know, you can cut it off, you can bury it up. I think sometimes burying up a weed is just as successful as actually digging it up. 
because when you dig it up, it still has a root. If you cover it up, you smother it. And it, you know, it's just not going to grow. You... So all you want to do is throw dirt over the weeds with your cultivator sweeps like this, see, and bury them up. And if you get them when they're an inch or so tall, it works very, very well. And so you can move these in or out so they do just what you want them to do. Speed is important. The lowest one likes to go fast. That's the cultivator in the rear. And uh, if you can go fast and not hit the plants with these, well, then it'll work even better because you can throw the dirt more. Okay, this cultivation equipment here is called a budding in-row weeder. And the in-row comes from the fact that it literally will weed around the plant. If you can see my fingers here, the rubber fingers go like this around the plant and scrub the weeds out. And there's a little metal prongs in the bottom of the, the uh, finger wheel and it spins the, the fingers. And uh, on transplanted plants like strawberry or broccoli or even actually fast growing plants like beans, it does a beautiful job. Onions in a single row, anything that uh, can take a little bit of scrubbing uh, without being pulled out. Uh, today, this is just about the right time and in timing to, to cultivate. The weeds are just, just coming through and this thing here will just take them and actually flick them right out of the ground. If you let them get too big, it won't work. It has to be done when the weeds are an inch or less in height. Uh, once you get past that stage, then you're just screwed up. So we love it. It's uh, it does an incredible job. It's like getting, you know, 15 people hoeing all at once and you're just <laughs> you're doing all the work yourself. It's mounted on an Alice Chalmers G tractor. Uh, they don't make them anymore, but this was made in the 40s and early 50s. A uh, little lightweight tractor with a motor in the rear. You can see perfectly what you're doing. Turns on a dime. For the adjustment, the actual adjustment on these, this budding weeder, it does all kinds of things. The whole, it goes in and out. Uh, it goes forward and back. Uh, these rear things can be turned around so they'll throw dirt in toward the plant or reverse so they'll throw dirt away from the plant. Uh, very, very versatile piece of equipment. Uh, one of the drawbacks is, you can see right here, it doesn't like wet soil, but shouldn't shouldn't be cultivating the rain anyway, because it, the dirt will pack up underneath. So you have to get off once in a while and bang on it to shake the dirt off so it'll do what it's supposed to do. But in dry soil, uh, sandy soil, it'll work in stones as long as there aren't too many of them. Generally with this machine you go fairly slow, maybe two to three miles per hour, depending on the crop and how strong it is. So we always have something in the front, weeding around the plant, and then something in the back covering the wheel track. But it's more than that. Uh, with the other tractors that have the uh, Lillistons on them, the Lilliston can actually do more work than just covering the wheel track. So uh, the front cultivator, whatever it may be, a sweep or a shovel or, or a fingers like this, works around the plant and the Lilliston can come along and finish up or level out or throw more dirt or hill, depending on what you want to do. So we always try to figure out what we're trying to do and Put a piece of equipment that'll, you know, do the most we can, you know, do the most good.